Uh, all right, well, first of all, I want to start by thanking the organizers for uh, inviting me. Uh, I'm a uh, complete novice to, to machine learning. I'm uh, very new to, to, the, uh, to, to, to this field. Okay. And uh, this is uh, not the usual audience that I face when I give a talk, so let me, uh, well, okay, first of all, let me acknowledge the people who, uh, uh, who did, the, did the work, my collaborators. Uh, Li Yan was the uh, main person uh, behind uh, this work. Uh, he's in the audience. He graduated this, uh, earlier this year and he's now working for, for Google. And uh, Wen Jun was a postdoc at Rice and uh, he's just moved to Tennessee as a, uh, taking on another postdoc position. And it's a collaboration between my group and uh, uh, Anke Paddle's group at, at Rice. Uh, I think Anke is probably at uh, Disneyland with his, <coughs> his daughter. Um, and uh, let me uh, spend a couple of slides on uh, first introducing my, uh, my field of study, ultra-cold atomic physics. I'm a theorist working in, uh, on, on cold atoms. Um, so uh, what is cold atom uh, good for? Uh, well, normally when we think about atoms or molecules, uh, we think about them, them as, uh, as particles. They, they collide with each other, interacting with each other. Uh, but uh, uh, as the name suggests, cold atom physics, we, we are dealing with atoms or, or molecules at a very, very low temperature. Uh, a low temperature that is uh, very close to absolute zero. So at such ultra-low temperatures, uh, things become very different. These atoms and molecules are really behave like quantum mechanical particles. They, they have wave functions. They exhibit wave phenomena. And the original idea, the original motivation for cold atoms is to do precision measurement, uh, precision spectroscopy. If you, have, uh, if you can cool the, these atoms or molecules down, if we can uh, uh, get rid of all the thermal random motion, then we, can, we have better control of these systems. Okay. And so, uh, so these kind of systems can have uh, uh, many applications. Uh, for instance, we can, we can use these cold atoms or cold molecules and build an interferometer out of it. And normally we think about interferometer, we use uh, photons, we use light. Uh, but at these uh, low temperatures, these atoms behave like waves, and waves, they can always interfere, so we can, we can build atomic interfer interferometers. Um, and these uh, kind of things uh, will have uh, applications in, uh, uh, in industry defense or uh, space navigation, uh, things like that. We can use these atomic interferometers to, to measure, for instance, uh, gravitational constant, uh, li little g. Um, well, the reason is uh, uh, these atoms, they are massive. They, 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 they are sensitive to, uh, to, to gravity field. So we can use them to, to explore what's, uh, what's underneath. We can, in, in Houston, it's, uh, there is a huge oil industry. And the oil industry, sometimes they are also interested in cold atoms because uh, they think that these cold atoms can, can help them detect uh, oils on, uh, beneath the Earth. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, so there are certainly some applications of, uh, practical applications of code atoms, but uh, that is uh, uh, not, uh, not what my, my interest is. Uh, I'm more interested in the, uh, essentially the, the fundamental physics, the, the, uh, the, uh, the basic quantum behavior of uh, uh, these atomic molecular systems. <laughs> and uh, uh, we know that the nature is, uh, is quantum, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the quantum nature uh, sometimes can be uh, uh, does not manifest themselves, and uh, at, at particularly at high temperatures. So, on the, in, at a low temperature, uh, the, the underlying, the, the ultimate quantum behavior uh, will become uh, more pronounced. Okay. So that's why we are interested. I, I'm interested in, in these cold atomic systems, and we're interested in ensemble of atoms uh, or molecules, and they interacting with each other. So this is ultimately a, a quantum many-body system, okay. and. Uh, uh, well, the previous uh, talk really make my, uh, made my job easy uh, because some of the uh, things, the motivation and stuff are, are pretty similar. And we know that uh, to, to, to simulate a quantum antibody system uh, on the classical computer is uh, not, uh, it's not, it's in general very difficult, or almost in, in general impossible. And uh, the reason is the size of the Hilbert space grows exponentially as the uh, size of the system uh, uh, increases. So for example, the when the number of particles grows, uh, the size of the Hilbert space grows exponentially. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so to to really say one, if you want to really want to simulate a quantum system, you probably need to use uh, another quantum system. Okay. And uh, and so the uh, so the the, the, the so. 
quantum simulation is uh, one of the major thrust of uh, cold atomic physics. And uh, the reason is uh, these uh, cold atomic systems are well under control. We, we put these atoms in, 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 in vacuum chamber. They are well isolated from the environment. And so such a well-controlled quantum system uh, can be used to simulate more complicated, well, uh, uh, not so well-controlled quantum, quantum, another quantum systems. <laughs> so uh, use the uh, uh, atomic system as a quantum simulation flat, uh, platform is uh, uh, a, a, a major direction in, in, in our field. <laughs> so, the, uh, so to build a quantum simulator, we uh, want to, it, it should contain an exponentially large amount of information, but without using an exponentially large amount of resources. Yeah. And uh, uh, so this is the idea of, uh, 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 so this is the idea of a quantum simulator. There are two, basically there are two types of quantum simulators. You can build a, uh, you can build a physical quantum simulator. Uh, I said that these uh, uh, cold atomic systems, or ions, or uh, some electronic systems can be used as a quantum simulator to simulate uh, uh, quantum antibody uh, models, to simulate more complicated, uh, uh, more complicated uh, uh, natural systems. And the, the other uh, quantum simulator is uh, a general purpose quantum computer. Okay, but uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, we, there have been a lot of effort uh, going on, uh, uh, both government, industry, and uh, academic, in academic uh, sectors. Uh, a lot of effort has been put into building a quantum computer. But it uh, 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 seems we, uh, uh, at, at least, uh, there's uh, uh, still a great amount of challenges we need to overcome before a general purpose quantum computer uh, arrives. So uh, before that, uh, we, have to, um, we, can, we, we have to simulate our quantum mechanics system on a classical computer. Now, how do we do that? Uh, and uh, we also heard uh, in this morning's, uh, the, the last talk of uh, this morning, uh, it's, it's not possible to exactly simulate a quantum system on a classical computer, but uh, we can approximately simulate a quantum system on a classical computer. And uh, that's, so that's the idea. Okay. So, uh, uh, so over the... Uh, uh, over the past few uh, past few years, there are a lot of uh, uh, algorithms, uh, methods has been uh, developed to try to simulate quantum systems on, on classical computer. And these uh, methods, many of these methods are uh, inspired by quantum information uh, science, uh, like these uh, matrix product states, uh, PEPs or project entangled uh, pair states, and tens tensor network states. And uh, uh, so the, these uh, new class of uh, algorithms uh, make it possible to simulate certain certain quantum uh, quantum phenomena uh, on a, uh, on a classical computer, <laughs> and they can uh, they can do much better than uh, the traditional uh, traditional algorithms. <laughs> and moreover, all these uh, methods can be combined with uh, quantum Monte Carlo techniques to uh, to, to sim simulate the things. <laughs> so uh, so more recently, people are thinking. Uh, you know, can from the machine learning community, uh, can we have uh, some new methods to simulate uh, quantum systems? And so, like using new networks. Okay. And on this regards, the uh, uh, the work by uh, by Kalia and uh, uh, Troyer a uh, couple of years ago on, on the, the science paper is really one of the. Uh, uh, one of the most important, uh, one of the milestones in, in uh, along this direction, and they build uh, build this uh, restrict boson machine, and combined with the variation of quantum Monte Carlo, to uh, 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 solve uh, the uh, couple of uh, uh, spin models, the, Eisen, the, uh, the Eising model and the Heisenberg model. Uh, they found the ground state and also did some uh, uh, a calculation of the quantum dynamics. The uh, uh, the the the, the restricted Boltzmann machine is uh, one of the one of the great examples where uh, it was uh, inspired by physics. It's, uh, so it 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 has uh, two layers: the visible layer and the hidden layer. And the interaction between the two layers are Ising type. It's like Ising interaction. <laughs> and uh, 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 so if so, we can write down uh, the energy functional uh, using these uh, uh, to to contain all the the, the visible layer hidden layer and the interaction between the two. Okay. And uh, uh, then from a statistic, uh, STEMAC, we know that there is a, um, a, a distribution function and it's a Maxwell, the, it's the Boltzmann distribution, it's a, a e to the negative e. Okay. And if we integrate out or sum over the hidden layers and the, the, the visible layer can, uh, can be used to represent a quantum, a quantum wave function. 
So this is how we use uh, uh, this neural network to represent uh, the wave function. Okay. And if, uh, from this wave function, well, if you take the log of it, yeah, you can use it to, to map this uh, closer to the, uh, uh, to the machine learning language, you can see that uh, on the right hand side we have a linear, a linear term and a nonlinear term. Okay. And the sigma uh, in this case is given by that, but uh, this is uh, like a uh, nonlinear activation function. All right. And the, the, the restrict boson machine is uh, a rather simple, uh, simple neural network. It uh, has only one, one hidden layer, and, uh, uh, in addition to a one visible layer. And there has been, uh, well, since, since, that, uh, since that, that work, there has been quite some uh, theoretical works uh, to, uh, to uh, and, um, make the statement that uh, uh, deep neural networks uh, can, uh, can represent a larger class of uh, 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 point wave function. Um, and in this paper, I, I think uh, Kali also mentioned this, this, this paper, the, the, uh, the argued that uh, a, a deep uh, convolution network can represent quantum states that uh, obey the, 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 volume, uh, in the, uh, the, the volume law of entanglement. Okay. So in, in, in simply put, uh, if you have a deep network, it can represent a larger class of uh, quantum states, and it can uh, represent states with, uh, um, uh, with um, uh, more significant entanglement, a de larger degree of entanglement there. Yeah. And uh, uh, however, over the, uh, over the past few years, there hasn't been many, um, many works to use a deep neural network to, uh, to, uh, to apply deep neural network to uh, quantum manifold physics. And one of the reasons, of course, is the, deep, uh, uh, the deeper the neural network, the, the more complicated it is, and there are more uh, parameters you need to optimize. And so uh, to, to optimize these uh, weights and biases become, uh, 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 become a problem. And how to, how to efficiently optim do the optimization is the, is the key uh, to, uh, for the application of these uh, deeper neural networks. And so in this work, we, uh, we used a, a deep neural ne network to solve, uh, uh, to solve uh, the, the, the so-called 1D s unit spin chain. And the, uh, this is the Hamiltonian we, uh, 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 we are working with, and we want to find the ground state of, of this, uh, uh, this Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is very simple. So it describes a chain of, uh, a chain of spins in, 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 in 1D. So we have uh, uh, we, we have uh, n side uh, uh, n side, and uh, in our calculation we use uh, n side equal to 60, and each side has a spin, okay. and uh, uh, each spin has uh, uh, has n possible values. Uh, for example, if n equal to two, that is a spin half particle, uh, and uh, so so each spin can take spin up or spin down uh, two possible values, okay. and so this n controls. Uh, this n controls the, 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 the complexity of, uh, of the system. And uh, this, uh, uh, this spin chain model uh, is not uh, out of the blue, and uh, it's an important model for uh, quantum magnetism. And also it is an effective model uh, describing a system of uh, one-dimensional uh, uh, strongly interacting uh, quantum particles. For instance, in uh, uh, in cold atoms, you can confine these cold atoms in uh, in the very elongated uh, trapping potential to 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 form a one-dimensional system. Okay. And uh, 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 in these cold atom systems, you can also tune the interaction. If you tune the interaction such that uh, uh, the, the, these atoms uh, uh, repair very strongly uh, uh, with each other, okay. then you have a, a strongly interacting. Uh, 1D, 1D system. Now you can imagine that if this interaction is uh, uh, infinitely strong, okay, these are 1D, 1D particles, uh, particles confined in 1D. If the repulsive interaction is infinitely strong, then these particles become uh, essentially hard core particles. They cannot, uh, so they become impenetrable. They cannot impenetrate uh, each other. And this is a unique property in, in 1D. If in high, high dimensions, if you have two particles here and they can always switch positions by going to the other di the dimension. But in 1D, if the interaction is uh, infinitely strong, then they cannot, uh, they cannot penetrate. Okay. So if you have uh, a system of 1D particles uh, interacting with each other through uh, uh, infinite repulsive interaction, uh, uh, then the system be just become very boring. Uh, you, you, put your, you put your particle from left to right, and uh, they are stuck. <laughs> they cannot do anything. 
And however, if the interaction uh, between them is not infinitely strong, it's, it, it is still very large. It's still very uh, a large repulsive interaction. But the interaction is not, uh, uh, not infinite. Then there's a possibility that these, the, the two neighboring atoms can exchange positions. Okay. They still do not want to be on top of each other because that is still the energy penalty. Uh, but they can, there's a possibility that they exchange a position. Okay. Now this exchange of position uh, from, if you want to consider the, the total density profile, uh, if two particles uh, here and here uh, are completely identical uh, from the total density profile point of view. Uh, but uh, if these two particles carry spin, and if they, are, uh, if they have different spin, then uh, this configuration and this configuration are different. And uh, this exchange uh, uh, of particles uh, will be captured by, uh, by, this, uh, by this Hamiltonian. So this Hamiltonian indeed is an effective model to describe this uh, 1D strongly interacting particles in, uh, in 1D. Okay. It's an effective model because uh, we, we can forget about the special degree of freedom of these particles. And so this uh, spin model will describe these, uh, uh, these particles. So that is the motivation of this, uh, uh, this Hamiltonian. Okay. And furthermore, uh, for this uh, Hamiltonian, if, uh, uh, well, it's a homogeneous spin chain model because the exchange, uh, this is the, uh, well, this is the exchange of uh, the uh, two neighboring particles, i and i, uh, I plus one uh, particle. And the coefficient uh, equal to one, uh, it's, uh, it's position independent. And for such a homogeneous spin chain model, uh, this, it can be exactly solved using the so-called beta ansatz uh, method. And so this gives us, uh, um, uh, give, give us a way to benchmark our result. Okay. So that is why uh, we, we choose this particular model to, to, to work with. And uh, uh, we construct a convolution, convolution network. I, I don't think I need to introduce uh, CNN in to, to this audience, uh, but the CNN uh, is uh, great in capturing the local features of, uh, uh, of, of, of a system. And for the, for the model we are considering, uh, we have uh, interactions where each particle only interacts with its neighbors. It, uh, it, it can exchange positions with its neighbor. So, uh, so the interaction is local. Okay. And uh, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, systems with local, lo local interaction represents a, a large class of uh, uh, quantum many-body system, quantum many-body models that we are interested in. And uh, uh, therefore, it's, it's natural to pick uh, CNN to, to, represent, uh, to represent such, such systems. All right, so this is the... Uh, uh, so this is the um, uh, essentially the, the architecture of, uh, uh, of our, our, our neural network. Okay. It's, a, it's a fully uh, convolutional. Okay. Uh, and we do not do pooling uh, after uh, the convolutional uh, uh, layer. Okay. Uh, so all these layers are convolutional, uh, except that the last layer we, it's, it's a fully connected. We do a reduced sum. Okay. And uh, 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 the network is real valued. I, I will come back to, to this. And uh, uh, its output is the wave function. It's the log of the wave function. And each convolution the layer uh, is identical in terms of its uh, high uh, parameters. Uh, the kernel size, number of filters are all identical for different layers. Okay. And uh, 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 we use, uh, uh, so the idea is we have the input layer. It, uh, the input layer gives you the, 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 the spin configuration. And the output is the wave function according to that spin configuration. And we use two different methods to encode the, the, the input spin configuration. Uh, in the so-called value encoding, each spin is encoded by a number. For instance, if we have, uh, if we have uh, n equal to two spin half system, uh, say uh, spin up, I encode it to be one, and the spin down is zero. So each spin, uh, each spin is, uh, uh, is encoded into a number. And so the, uh, so the, 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 the input is a, uh, uh, is a tensor with, uh, with the shape inside the number of sides and S and S will be, uh, will be one because it's a number. Okay. And the second encoding method is the so-called one-hot encoding. So each spin is now encoded into a one-hot vector. Okay. In the case of spin half, uh, then uh, each spin is uh, encoded into uh, a column vector with the uh, two elements. For example, spin, uh, spin up is uh, zero, one, and spin down is uh, one, zero. <laughs> and it turns out that uh, the result uh, uh, we're getting will depend on uh, how we encode the, 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 these input states. And 
uh, all right, so this is uh, the Hamiltonian we, uh, we want to solve, and we use uh, inside equal to equal to 60. So the total Hilbert, uh, the size of the Hilbert space is uh, uh, n to the power of 60, which is pretty large, even for n equal to 2. Okay. So we, uh, the input are these uh, spin configurations, and uh, the output is the uh, wave function, or the log of the wave function. Okay. Now since we calculate the log of the wave function, so we, we require that uh, the wave function to be, to be non-negative. Okay. And uh, that is not the, uh, uh, in general, not the case. And if we have a Hamiltonian like that, uh, it's not guaranteed that the ground state, uh, we're interested in ground state only. It's not guaranteed that ground state is non-negative. Uh, but uh, we can do a simple uh, unitary transformation. Okay. And uh, uh, instead of uh, the exchange operator uh, E, and we go to this E tilde. And uh, E tilde, well, E just simply exchange the two, uh, uh, two, two spins uh, at the, uh, the, the two neighboring spins. Uh, and E tilde, uh, well, if the, if the two neighboring spins uh, uh, are equal valued, if alpha is uh, alpha equal to beta, well, well, E tilde doesn't do anything, basically. But if the two neighboring spins are different, alpha is not equal to beta, it, it, uh, it pick up a negative sign. Okay. And after this transformation, well, it's a unitary transformation. It does not change the spectrum. So the eigenvalues are not changed. The ground state energy is not, uh, not changed by, by, by doing this. Uh, but but uh, when, once, we, uh, when, once we did this uh, transformation, we can guarantee that the ground state of this Hamiltonian now is, uh, is real and uh, non-negative. Okay. And that is how we can uh, use the network we, we, we designed to find the, uh, find the ground state of this system. And so the idea to find the, uh, uh, the ground state is using variational calculation. And this was also introduced in earlier talks. And these, uh, the, the, the parameters of the network are, are, are basically now the, the variational parameters. So the wave function is uh, what depend on the spin configuration, but also depend on these, uh, uh, the, the weights and the biases of the, of the network. So the idea is to calculate uh, the energy functional. It's the expectation, expectation value of the, of the Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, uh, now what we need to do is to minimize this energy functional by optimize uh, these, uh, uh, these parameters. Okay. And there are different methods we can, you can use to optimize, but uh, we choose the standard one, the, the gradient optimization method. And so the, uh, the, the, the concept is simple, but the, the, the problem, of course, is uh, uh, to, to calculate, to evaluate this energy functional exactly, we need to sum over exponentially many terms. And that is uh, not possible in, in our classical computer. And so we have to, uh, we have to use uh, 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 stochastic summation. That's where the Monte Carlo comes in. And uh, to, to evaluate the expectation value of some, uh, some operator, uh, uh, so it becomes a, a stochastic summation o over the so-called local, uh, local operator and uh, the distribution, uh, some distribution function. Okay. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, the traditional VMC uh, goes like this. Okay. Uh, first, you sample a sample a batch of states, and uh, I normally use the Markov chain uh, Monte Carlo sampling. Okay. Sample a bunch of states, and then calculate the local energy and the derivatives of for, for each state. Okay. And with this, we can calculate, <coughs> we can evaluate the energy functional and its derivative uh, with respect to the, uh, the weights and the biases, these uh, uh, variational parameters. Okay. Then we do, uh, 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 and we, we, we update these uh, weights uh, uh, in this way, and repeat this process until it, uh, until it converges. Okay. And uh, well, uh, for, for conventional VMC, uh, people are doing uh, to, to evaluate the, uh, to calculate the ground state of a certain many body yeah. Hamiltonian. Uh, these steps, the, uh, these three steps can in general be done uh, fairly efficiently on a, on a computer. Yeah. Uh, as long as the number of variational parameters is, uh, 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 is not too large. Okay. And uh, in, in typical calculations, the number of variational parameters uh, ranges of, uh, from a few to a few hundred. Okay. And uh, 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 well, uh, why we can have uh, such a small number of variational parameters? And uh, no normally we have, some, uh, we have some, some knowledge about the quantum system. We have a lot of insights built into uh, constructing these uh, variational ensembles, variational uh, wave function. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why we can, have, uh, we can 
uh, we only need to uh, use uh, a small number of variational parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do not have uh, uh, prior knowledge, then uh, normally we need uh, uh, we n the, the number of variational parameters will be, uh, will be large. Okay. And if that's the case, uh, then the, these steps will not be efficient. And in the case of a deep neural network, uh, we're dealing with uh, thousands, tens of thousands, or even close to, to uh, for example, in, in Carlio's talk, he mentioned he's uh, on the 20 layer uh, convolution network, uh, the number of weights and biases are uh, close to 1 million. Okay. If that's the case, then uh, uh, to, uh, to do these steps on, on, a, on a computer become, uh, become inefficient. So we need to, we need to develop some method uh, to, uh, to perform all these steps in a much more efficient way. And so this is uh, the, the, the key of uh, uh, our present work. So, uh, so, so we, we developed this method called the Important Sampling uh, Gradient Optimizer. Uh, so the first step uh, is the same. We use uh, 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 Markov chain Monte Carlo to sample a batch of, uh, a batch of states. Okay. And then we do also do the same. We calculate the, the lo local energy and the, the uh, local derivative for each each state, okay. and then we calculate the uh, the derivatives and then try to uh, update uh, these variational parameters, the weights and biases. Okay. Uh, however, uh, for each uh, sampled for each batch of states, okay. uh, this update uh, we do it many times. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, so uh, when, when, you cal when we calculate the gradient of the energy functional, we add another, uh, another weighting factor. This is the important, uh, important sampling weight. Okay. And in, in this way, uh, for this given batch of states, we can update the parameters many times. Uh, so we, uh, within the iteration loop, we have another inner loop, and we, we run this uh, step two and step three for many times. Uh, the number of, uh, it's we, we call it unoptimized times. Okay. So in this way, within each batch of states, we can optimize uh, uh, the variation parameters, these weights and biases, uh, uh, over uh, unoptimized times. Okay. So that is essentially uh, where we essentially uh, recycle uh, or reuse uh, these sampled states. And it's a, uh, it's a much more efficient way of uh, using, uh, using these sampled states. Uh, then we do uh, uh, we, we do this uh, outer uh, outer loop to 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 do iterations, and so uh, this is uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the 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 architecture of uh, uh, of the whole uh, whole system. We have the network to represent uh, the the point of wave function, and it, uh, send out parameters to uh, to do the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling, and also to uh, into the uh, optimizer to 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 update. Uh, update these uh, uh, parameters. Okay. And this, uh, 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 so this product tells us that uh, why, uh, why this new, uh, new optimization scheme uh, is more efficient. Uh, if n optimize is equal to one, okay. uh, well n optimize is this uh, num number of uh, loops in this uh, inner loop, and this is essentially the conventional method. Okay. So for each batch of uh, states, we update the parameters once. Okay. And so, uh, so this is the, just the conventional method. Okay. And it w as you can see, that uh, this is, is the, uh, the least efficient way of, uh, of doing things. Okay. It requires uh, 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 a, a larger number of iteration steps. And whereas if we choose, for example, an optimize equal to 100, then uh, the, n the number of iteration steps can be <coughs> greatly reduced. Okay. And to uh, uh, and to make a, a, a better comparison, we can compare the war time directly. Uh, and here again, an optimized good one is the uh, conventional method. And we run these, uh, we, 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 uh, so we, we run our calculation on both CPU and the GPU. Okay. And first of all, we can see that uh, uh, if you, uh, on the same architecture for both CPUs, uh, choose, uh, choose an, uh, an optimized equal to 100, uh, reduce the, 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 the war time uh, quite a lot. Okay. And also uh, compare CPU and the GPU, also see that uh, uh, running these things on GPU, uh, again, is much more efficient. Okay. And so we see uh, 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 over one order of magnitude speed up with, with our method in comparison to the conventional method. Okay. And also a very dramatic speed up on GPU over CPU. And uh, this uh, speed up on GPU over CPU is uh, 
uh, is uh, even more pronounced uh, uh, when the uh, when we have a deeper network. When the uh, more complicated the network is, the 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 the, the more dramatic speed up we, we see uh, when run run this thing GPU. And these are the uh, results. It's uh, uh, so we, we and the, the, as I said that this model is exact solvable. So we know exactly the ground state, uh, ground state energy. So we can compare the uh, compare the energy uh, from our numerical results and with the uh, ground truth. These are the horizontal dashed lines. Okay. And for n equal to two, three, four, and uh, and five. Okay. And uh, uh, we also calculate the. Uh, uh, the non-local correlation functions, uh, because to just to make sure that, uh, well, sometimes in variation of calculation we can get uh, we can get the energy very accurately, but uh, that does not guarantee you that you have the correct wave function. Uh, and so we calculate these uh, uh, correlation functions to and uh, uh, see that the the uh, the match what we expect. Okay. Right. And I mentioned that we use two different coding methods to uh, encode the uh, input state, the input spin configuration. Okay. And one is the value encoding, where each spin state is encoded into a number. And the other is the, uh, the one-hot encoding, where each spin state is encoded into a one-hot vector. Okay. And uh, from this plot, you can see that uh, the one-hot encoding you know, gives us, uh, gave us a much better result, much accurate result. Uh, uh, the reason for that, uh, it might be that in, in one hot encoding, essentially we are uh, we are uh, we are expanding, we are enlarging the the, the 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 dimension of the of the system. So we are doing uh, optimization on the larger dimension, and that sometimes can help us to uh, to speed up the optimization uh, uh, opti uh, the optimization uh, optimization procedure. <laughs> Uh, but we probably need to do more uh, more test and more experiment to uh, to to nail down what uh, uh, what really is the reason uh, that one hot encoding uh, provides a much better result. And let me summarize uh, what I said so far. Uh, uh, so we have uh, built a fully uh, convolutional network to represent uh, on a wave function and a test. The performance of this uh, neural network uh, on the 1D spin chain uh, spin chain model, and uh, the key uh, uh, contribution in this work is to we develop this uh, uh, important sampling uh, gradient optimization method that uh, allows us to uh, allows us to train the uh, network much more efficiently uh, in uh, uh, on the computer. <laughs> and we also uh, discussed the uh, the effects of uh, different encodings on, on these input state at. Uh, 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 and uh, and this uh, uh, so so far uh, in 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 previous studies of uh, uh, neural network on uh, quantum metabody uh, applications, uh, uh, this seemed to have have been um, uh, been neglected. And our code are uh, in this uh, uh, GitHub uh, account, and you can take a look. And now let me give, uh, uh, well, this is certainly just, uh, as Kalio mentioned, this is, uh, uh, we're just in the beginning of uh, uh, applying uh, neural networks, particularly deep neural networks, to quantum metal body physics. So, uh, so our work is uh, uh, just a small step along, along this line. And uh, there are many open questions. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, that in, in our work, we use a real valued network. And, uh, uh, it turns out that for for the model we are considering, we can we can uh, we can use that uh, this type of network to find the ground state wave function. But that of course is not a general. In general, we know that the the wave function is complex valued, okay. and we've tried to uh, we've tried to use uh, two two networks to represent uh, the the mod uh, the the magnitude and the phase of the of the wave function. Uh, so we uh, so one 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 network calculate the the magnitude and the other calculate the phase and then combine them to get the full wave function. Uh, but it doesn't seem to work very well. It's not uh, uh, not accurate and not, not efficient. Okay. So uh, I think to develop uh, uh, efficient uh, 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 deep network, that uh, complex value that network is uh, really essential to uh, for, for quantum physics applications. And uh, of course there has been there has been some development uh, in the uh, in the machine learning uh, community on these complex valued uh, 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 networks, and uh, Kali, you probably also are doing something along this line. But uh, 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 but, 
but uh, uh, how to train a complex value in a deep network is, uh, I think, is still op open question. And the, the other, uh, uh, other question is that the quantum systems, the quantum metabolic system in particular, normally possess some uh, uh, symmetry. Okay. And how to, how to incorporate the, the symmetry into, into the networks. And this, if we can do so, this of course uh, provide an important constraint on the, on the network and on the wave function we, we, we want to find. And that can uh, greatly speed up the, 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 the calculation. And uh, well in this morning, we actually have seen a nice talk by, by our chair, how to uh, put the Euclidean symmetry into these networks. Uh, I think yesterday we also had a uh, talk on uh, applying network to, uh, to lattice Q, uh, QCD, uh, where the, the gauge symmetry has to be, uh, has to be uh, uh, satisfied. And this is uh, what this work was also mentioned in the previous talk. This is a Fermi net. Uh, so the, the, the network is, uh, is built uh, and incorporating the, the Fermi statistics, the, uh, the exchange anti-symmetry, uh, into, into the network. Okay. So in general, when we, when we apply, uh, when we build a network for a particular uh, physical system, we have to uh, uh, put these uh, symmetry considerations into account. Okay. And uh, 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 my last thought on this, uh, we are using this uh, uh, exact solver model uh, to, to, to benchmark our calculation. Our, our, our idea, of course, is to, uh, once we know this, uh, how, how this works, we want to apply, uh, build up uh, networks to, to, to solve problems that cannot be solved exactly, cannot be solved using conventional methods. But when I talk to uh, uh, my collaborator, uh, uh, Ankip uh, Pedal, uh, he's uh, very excited about these exact solver models. He, he, he said that uh, these models are, are great because we know the, the, we know the ground truth, and therefore by, by, by doing these kind of studies, it might help us to, uh, to, to, to understand more uh, about the uh, network itself. Uh, and the, the, these workings, the, the inner workings, the, the mechanisms of uh, network uh, 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 might, uh, uh, might become more clear when we study these, uh, these type of problems. And uh, therefore, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's true that uh, uh, the, the two communities, uh, physics and machine learning, uh, will be certainly beneficial to, to, to each other. And I think that's also the, uh, uh, the, the theme of this workshop and this long, long program to, to, uh, to get uh, mutual benef uh, uh, benefits from each other and by, by putting the different communities together to talk to each other. Uh, all right, I think uh, this is uh, all I want to say. Yeah. So thank you for sticking to the end uh, on the Friday afternoon. <laughs>